Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is a tutorial series about character stats and character creation. We will go over and as you may have seen already in the introduction video, we will go over and create some stats for our characters, some base classes we can inherit from and we will go over and create those stats, make a small UI interface where we have the possibility to increase and decrease that stats and later on we'll go over into saving and loading that stats, um, sending that to a persistent game object and we'll uh, take all that information into the next scene so we can actually work with them. So, okay, let's get started with that because we have a lot of stuff to do. At first I'm gonna go over and create a, a new folder which is going to contain my scripts. So I call this one just a scripts folder and I can also create another folder for some textures. Um, you don't need to use actually textures but if you want to have a style on your game then yeah, just go over and use them. So what I want to do at first is I go over and drag one small inventory graphic I already created in here. I don't need all of that info right now, but for upcoming videos it's going to be important for me, so ignore everything in there. So the first one I want to make sure is I want to uh, make this one from texture to sprite to D and set this one to multiple, otherwise I don't have the possibility to set multiple um yeah, buttons inside and what I need for my um, currently uh, stuff I want to work on is that part in here so I go over and just drag over that I can also go over and rename all that info drag all that slides to my needs or that borders in here which are at first blue and in the top also same I need um, those three buttons in here so the first one was a minus as you may have seen already in the introduction too, the one was a plus and the one was an arrow. Oh no, we don't need that with an arrow, that's for other cases. So I can go over and uh, rename them already maybe to inventory uh, plus. So I easily know what they are about. So this is going to be the plus, this is going to be the minus. And this is just my background, so inventory or stats panel background. So what I also want to do is I want to keep that uh, border persistent or uh, persistent in its size. So this border can just be um, maybe 7 pixels from the outside. So you can see that green border now is going to protect the border outside. So this will be a sliced image in the later parts. So it will be sliced at that point. So this will not deform on stretching. Okay, that's pretty much everything in here. So I go over and apply this and close that window. Now I go over and right click in the hierarchy panel and set UI and create a canvas. And I want to make sure that I set the canvas scaler from constant pixel size to scale screen size. So I can yeah, easily resize everything I want and I need. So also um, in that canvas I create a new, uh, new UI panel. So this panel is going to hold all the stats. So I drag this one down, I don't know, to whatever size I need it, center it to my screen or place that wherever I need to. And of course in the image component instead of the background I just have there, I choose my inventory black background and make sure that the alpha channel is full at 100%. So now you can see it's not going to stretch the outer rim or the outer border from my image itself. So uh, this can have some nice image effects. Okay, the next one is I need a, a space a game object or just an empty game object directly under that panel because this is my stats panel. I want to place all the buttons inside a space a game object. So you don't need to re rename that stuff, but uh, for later usage this might be important for you too. So in this space a game object I can easily add in a horizontal layout group. So this horizontal layout group um, will just keep track of all that stuff inside. So what I also want to make sure is that I don't want to child force expand the height of whatever is going to be inside, but before hand I go over and show you what I expected to do. So at first one I want to create a new UI panel again and uh, currently this is going to stretch as you can see but I don't want that to be stretched. Also, I don't want to have that any image, so just uh, check sprite to none and give it a full color. 
But uh, since uh, the horizontal layout group takes care of the height as it is, I go to my game object, which is my spacer, and disable height in child force expand. Also, for the panel itself, I go over and add a layout element. So I have the possibility to override several things in here. The first one is flexible width and flexible height. Um, just check them, but type in zero, so you don't have to do anything in here anymore. And I want the minimum height of being maybe 40 pixels for that particular bar. If you are unhappy with the size, you can also go over and change that to 30 or 35 or whatever you want, but this will be the minimum size. So what when we are playing, I want to make sure that everything stays as it is on my small screen and if I resize that screen everything will follow up and that's the most important one I want in here so the next one is I need some inf uh, information directly on my panel um, itself the layout element and so on is everything is via yeah, as it has to be and I don't need to grab that and go into the game object itself. But to the panel itself, which is going to have all our text informations, like uh, what is the stat we are going to open or actually work with, I want to add a text element in here and just drag this one to the points or to the outer points of that and maybe to the middle point over here to that panel we are currently working in. Also, I want to make sure that this is going to be centered in this uh, at that point over there. And maybe you can work with best fit. If you don't like best fit, uh, but this is going to be the best one, I believe, for uh, different screen sizes and so on. So it will always try to fit the text. The, no matter how long the text is going to be, it will always try to fit this one into that one line. And what I want to write in is the word strengths. So strengths is going to be the first stat we are working on or working with. And you can also go over into the maximum size and you don't want that to be higher or bigger than 30 pixels or maybe 25 pixels. Whoops like this. So on the after that text element which is just going to be uh, the stat name so we're gonna rename this, this is important later on um, I go over and create another text element in here but this time I will go over from the middle in here from the center of that panel drag everything around as I need it also again check best fit but type in two zeros in here and I will reduce the size to maybe over there. It doesn't really matter, so you may want to go over and change everything to your needs again. And I want to make sure that I center this one over here in the text element. If there are three numbers later on, it will automatically fit that numbers into that stats panel. Okay, so and in the very end on that la uh, on the right, I want a plus and a minus button. So again, select the panel and choose UI. Uh, button. The button itself does not need any text element, so I go over and delete this one and I want to add a UI sprite which is my inventory plus at first. I don't want to uh, stretch that, uh, so I go over and check preserve aspect ratio. And now I go over and drag this one near the zero maybe and place it wherever I want to. Uh, maybe here. Then I go over and duplicate that button by pressing Ctrl D and drag this one over and change the graphic into the minus graphic like that what I now can do is this text will uh, be later on important so I can just rename that to maybe strength text or uh, stat text maybe and what I now can do is I can create a prefab out of this I don't need to but I have the possibility to do so so maybe for later on um, stuff uh, working around or fiddling around again with those plus buttons for example or you want to e rearrange anything inside but you want to have the changes to all of your um, prefabs or or everything what is reading from that prefab panel then you can always go in and do so and change everything in the panel uh, prefab and then apply all the changes directly to that panel but since I know I'm happy with that I will again test if everything works and the stretching works fine yeah, there we go, pretty good. And what I now want to do is, I want to duplicate that panel once, but as you can see, it is not working properly. And I have chosen the wrong layout group. 
I need to do it with a vertical layout group. Uh, group. I'm sorry for this, so I'm gonna go over and delete the panel once again. Um, I also go over and remove the uh, horizontal layout group, but instead add a vertical layout group. Uh, again, I'm sorry, and again disable the height. So now I can drag the panel once again inside that game object, and now I'm able to duplicate that. And now you can see I uh, would like to have a small gap in between those two stats, so I can easily go into my game object spacer and set some spacing in between those pads uh, into that uh, or between the elements inside. So maybe of two pixels or maybe more. Now you can see there's a small gap with that spacing inside. So what I can do now is basically just go over and duplicate that as often as I need. In my case it's going to be six. So now I have six stats I can work with into my stats panel on side and I can also go over and still go, um, yeah fit everything to my stats panel and I can also go and take the outer rim of my game object in here and drag everything wherever I want to. So you have always the possibility to change things. Um, since we will have some more uh, buttons or yeah some buttons in the top I may take some more space in there or at that point and same for the game object I go over and drag this wherever I need that later on. Okay so now uh, we can actually start to create those three buttons for our classes. If you have seen my character select the nation select panel window then you don't need to go over and create that um, that buttons because you will use the function we are calling from that buttons later on by the ray casting directly when you are um, yeah, uh, whenever you are selecting one character or car or whatever. So in the stats panel again I go over and create a new UI panel and this panel in this case is not going to be the full size but just here over there and in that again I will add a horizontal layout group in this case because I want to have all the buttons directly next to each other in that so it's easier for me to set it up you don't again need to but um, I just pass in one button and if you have that the hopping or the button is hopping to the top left corner just drag it slightly and it will automatically snap into the layout group or in that panel and I go over and duplicate that three times so I have the possibility to again every time change anything I want to and I need to. So fitting the bare buttons to that is pretty much okay. Now I can go over into that buttons itself and set everything to or uh, change the text to Archer Warrior and the last one is going to be our mage class or mage create mage button I don't know. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this side and in the very bottom of that panel we can also go over and create another UI panel. This time not at the very top but in the very bottom over here. And what I want to add in here is again another text element. So it's going to be UI text. This is going to be the stat points we can later on um, yeah, GIF away, for example. So um, I just call this one or type a text in here points to spend and a colon. Also, I can go over and use best fit if I want to. And maybe I do it like that. So the panel is a bit too big. Maybe we'll reduce the size and drag back the points to spend into that. Again, next to this, I'm gonna duplicate this uh, specific text element and drag this one over here. And I can type in any number I want. In my case, I start with zero, so I need there or see that there are some changes later on. And next to that um, spend button, I believe I will change the color to very darkish black, so it's seen a bit better. I also want to make sure that it's centered in here and in there, maybe. Same for this one in the height. And in the end of that panel there needs to be a button. So UI button. And this button needs to be uh, over here. I don't know. 
place it wherever you want and however you want that. This is going to be our save button. So when we are later on pressing on that save button, then we are, yeah, again, saving everything. So again, now we can go over and, well, we better don't do that. Just keep it as it is. Uh, no matter how it looks, it doesn't really matter. Again, if you need to change something, just uh, drag stuff outside, like the panels you don't want to stretch, for example, and then later on drag them back in. But for now, we are going to be okay-ish. Okay, so the first 50 minutes are over and we have set up everything. But we don't actually have coded anything, so let's get started with that. At first we want to create a new class, or basically a base class, where we can inherit from. So create a new c -sharp script and call this one base class with a big a, a B and a big C. And gonna open this one up in mono develop. Okay, so what we do is we want to have just a class without inheriting mono behavior. This class is just for our stats. It's for the base stats, actually. So, what stats do we have? We have... Uh, private variables at first of type int and those are strengths make sure you type everything small with small letters uh, a private int um, wisdom or agility at first it doesn't really matter and whenever or however we do that gonna zoom in a bit so the next one is a, a private int agility and then we have uh, three special ones, um, which are not directly um, for the stats itself, but still need to be in here. So this is going to be private, again, of type int. Whoops, whatever that was. Um, this is going to be an armor stat, private int. Then we need some hit points. And the last one is private int region. So region or regeneration. Uh, regeneration will later on uh, will recover uh, uh, HP or hit points per 5 ticks or per 20 ticks or per 1 tick. Um, this is up to you how you want to use that. So since everything here is a private we need to um, set up some getters and setters so we have the possibility to to yeah type in information but don't actually yeah change information uh, directly in here so this needs to be public it's of type int and with this in this time we um, type all the first letters big so and what we want to do is with that getters and setters we want to make sure that we have the possibility to read and to send or write data into the base class and from the base class. So what we say is get then curly brackets and in curly brackets we say return strength and don't forget the semicolon in between and after that we want also the possibility to set oops wrong bracket to set uh, that value, so what we say is a strength equals value. So we set with that, we are able to set the value to strength. Okay, and that is what we need to do with all the other five stats too. So go over and copy this one, leave a line, and copy that one five times again. So now we have the double one. So what the next one was uh, wisdom. So we start with that wisdom. And in here we say wisdom with small letters. And again, wisdom with small letters. Same for agility. So agility was a big A in the beginning. And in here we return the small ability uh, agility. And the same for this one. Then we go over and take the armor with a big A. And in here we have the small armor. And here the other small armor too. Then we have hit points. Maybe like this. And in here we have hit points with more letters. I don't know. Or oh, let me just do it like this. And here we go. Same here too. And the last one is the regeneration with a big R. Regeneration. And we take the small regeneration. 
and place this one in here. Okay, so now we save that. So what we now can do is we can inherit that base class. So what we need to do is at first we need to create a new um, class basically, which is um, inheriting that information and we can set any class or set up any class with that. So we create a new class which is going to be maybe our base archer class. So in base archer class we don't want again um, inherit mono behavior but what we want to do is we want to inherit base class so everything which stands in that class is accessible from this one. How can we access that? Like first this is going to be a called a constructor I believe. So what we'd want to do is we say public base archer class. So it's going to be the same name as the class itself but with brackets behind that. So in that brackets we have the possibility to actually take strengths from the getter and setter directly inheriting base class and we can set strengths to whatever we want. For example to 10. The same can be applied to Wisdom. Wisdom is going to be equal to 10. Since it's an archer, it's not very smart, for example. Agility, since it's an archer, can be set to 20. Uh, hit points can be set to maybe, I don't know, 90 or 20 or whatever you like to do. Uh, same for armor. Armor might be pretty low at the very beginning, maybe 3, 5, I don't know. You will know what you want to do. And regeneration, maybe it's going to be 0 at first or maybe 1. You decide again what you need and want. Don't forget to save that class. And the same needs to be now for all, all our other classes. So we create a new one. It's going to be a base warrior class. Oh, don't ask me why that always happened. So this is a base warrior class. For example, again we open this one up in mono develop. Hopefully everything works again. Yep, there we go. In this case, again we don't inherit uh, mono behavior but base class. We can go get rid of uh, start and update and again we say ba public base warrior class uh, in those brackets, whoops curly brackets in here and again we can set up all our information in here so strength is going to be equal to in this case it's going to be a warrior so it's stronger then again we have a wisdom it's going to be maybe 10 or 8 or whatever you want. Agility is going to be 10 and then we have again armor It's going to be equal to yes yeah, since he is a bit smarter maybe 10 and Then we have hit points It's going to be equal to maybe 130 or 20 and The last one is regeneration. It's going to be zero Don't forget to save the script and return to unity once again and we create the last of our classes. Again, you can create 100 of classes. It's up to you what you want. And this is going to be our base mage class. And again, we open this one up in mono develop. Once open, we get rid of mono behavior once again and the inherit base class. Get rid of start and update. And again, say public base mage class with brackets as a function or constructor and we say again strength is going to be equal to 10 or a 5 or whatever since a base uh, um, a mage is not strong in this case then we have agility it's going to be 10 maybe 2 again you decide what you want to do um, then we have the wisdom and wisdom is going to be equal to 20 in this case since he is a mage then we have armor going to be 5 or maybe 3 and we have hit points those can be just a bit uh, smaller maybe 80 or 70 and the last one is going to be the regeneration and regeneration might be 4 for example. Okay so don't forget to save this class too and now we have the possibility to create a player out of this.
And how can we do that is at first we need an extra class once again. I'm sorry for this, but we need to. And with that class, we have later on the possibility to um, in, yeah, create everything on the spot. Also, we go over and take all that information, um, uh, but uh, something extra too. So the player class will have a bit more information as the other uh, base classes in here. Because we will go over and inherit everything from everywhere and so we don't have any problems later on. Okay, and this is going to be our base player class. So this is actually the class our player will be constructed in. And yeah, it will have at least everything we already have but a bit more as before. This is not inheriting anything. It's going to be like the base class. It's um, yeah, doing everything basic in here, but we can copy and paste some infos from the base class itself. So what we do is we take all that what we already have like strengths, wisdom and so on and all the constructors of the base class and copy them over. So control C and in here control uh, V. But we want uh, two more, no, three more extra stats. So the first one is going to be private and of type string in this case. And this string is going to be our player name. So we can rename or name our character later on. We will have a, a level on our character. So it's of type int. Or, and we can call this one player level. Like this. And the last one is going to be the class that the specific player uh, currently is. So it's going to be private and in this case of type base class. And this is going to be our uh, player class. Okay, so those are three extra stats we need for our player creation later on. But we still inherit everything and we still need all that information in here because we will read all the data from base class or, for example, from um, any warrior, mage or archer class. Okay, so now we have the player class also set up. We can save that and go to the, yeah, to the character creation, actually. So what we need to do is, again, we create another c -sharp script and this is going to be called create player. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.